I'm Bill Jones and welcome to Vibe TV, a show that highlights local athletes, their schools and their communities. On today's show, high school athletes are being recruited earlier and going to college younger than ever. You'll be interested to learn why some people are against the idea. Good sports photography is dependent on technology and artistic creativity. We'll share some of this year's best throws with you. One of our local athletes has been nominated for a coveted national award. We have the details for you. Athletics are exciting, but we know they come with risk, and sometimes it takes tragedy to find inspiration. We'll tell you how a local athlete is coping with a debilitating injury. And one local band had the experience of a lifetime performing in one of the country's most well-known parades. Some of our area's top athletes are being asked to make life-altering decisions, many before they're even able to drive. Colleges are pushing kids to make commitments long before they graduate. And some students graduated last month to attend college this month. It's a growing trend among high school seniors as the recruiting game intensifies at warp speed. TXA 21's Keith Garvin has more. Big time college football. For students and fans, these programs are the flagships of their respective universities. Success on the collegiate field is largely dependent on the success of the players here. Choosing the best high school players is crucial to any college program. For sure, the recruiting process is much more intense now than it's ever been. So intense that not only are universities asking kids to verbally commit by the time they're juniors, some, like twins Matt and Luke Jokel, are leaving high school early to begin their college careers. The Jokels graduated from Arlington High School last December, a semester ahead of time and accepted scholarships to Texas A&M. I was ready for it, we both were. How do you know if it's right for your student athlete? More and more high school football players are graduating early and in other sports like basketball, some players are being asked to give verbal commitments as early as their sophomore years. Psychologists say for a teenager, it can cause undue pressure and confusion. We know that at 15 or 16, literally your brain isn't all connected up yet. Right. Plano psychologist Dr. Sylvia Gearing believes sophomores and juniors are too young to make such a life-changing decision, even though these verbal commitments are non-binding. 15, 16, too soon to make a decision that's going to put them in a situation like that for many, many years. 41 personnel, let's go! West Mesquite head coach Mike Overton also believes too much pressure is placed on high school athletes. Overton's had several players graduate early and believes it's time to reduce the intensity. And I wish the NCAA would even legislate some new rules slowing down the recruiting process and delaying it some, but I, I believe that'll never happen. Matt redshirted at quarterback, but is thought of highly by the A&M staff. Luke started for the Aggies at the key position of left tackle. The boys say the college game is much faster than high school, both on the field and in the classroom. Yeah, and our family has prepared us so much for that. I mean, our parents have done a great job with us, and we're very disciplined kids. And it just worked for them. I don't know if it would be right for every kid, but it was right for them. Just about every major school in Texas, including TCU, UT, and Texas A&M, have or have had several players graduate early from high school to start their college careers. The officials we spoke to say they never encourage an athlete to graduate early. They just present it as an option. What an exciting year we had in high school football. So many great games and memorable finishes. Vibe Magazine works with some wonderful photographers to capture those priceless moments. And J.D. Sanders, publisher and managing partner of Vibe Magazine, is here to talk about just a few of those great pictures, along with our resident recruiting expert, David McNabb. It really was a great year for high school football. It capped with state championship weekend the week before uh, Christmas at Cowboys Stadium in Arlington. I know you have to be very proud of uh, what your magazine has, what Vipe has, right, Well, it was JD? great. We were out there, um, Tim and I <clears throat> kind of went back and forth of who was there, but we both wound up being there 12 hours one day, 14 hours the next with traffic, getting out there and getting prepared. <laughs> but we had photographers out there. We had uh, people there uh, twittering live from the game, uh, really kind of trying to capture the essence, not only just if they were watching it on TV or if they were there watching the game, but they could kind of follow along on the insight that, that Tim and I have about particular games or particular where someone was recruited. 
but the photography, uh, I think, really stood out this year. Well, and uh, David, of course, there, and he was also at the TAP State Title Games uh, down south. Let's uh, run through some of the picks that you see in Vite Magazine, including this one. This is a great one here. Denton Geyer blocking a long view punt to win a state semifinal game in the final seconds. Yeah, I mean, you know, just from a photography standpoint, it's obviously a great shot. Looks like something you'd find in the opening part of Sports Illustrated, but it, you know, it just captures the intensity of, of Denton Geyer's season. That literally was in the final minute of yeah, the game. I mean, yeah. there was 30 seconds left in the game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and, and the Denton Geyer season was great. And one of the really great things about the high school playoffs, it's kind of like the Final Four with NCAA. Coaches are referred to by kind of how many Final Fours you win. In high school football, there's a lot of, if you make the state final, it's not so much, you know, obviously state titles are really big, but they're big for programs. Salina has state titles, but coaches a lot of times will be referred to reached, you know, XX state finals. That, that's still a huge border, you know, to cross. For that's Jim right. Yeah, you know, of course, Trinity's been in so many state finals. They did not win in this year's state championship game, and this was the scene as Brandon caught that last second pass thrown to him, the Trinity uh, Sterling uh, all-everything type player, uh, and the disappointment right there, uh, an incredible scene right there at the end of that 5A Division I state championship game at Cowboys Stadium. Then a Cibolo Steel defender wrestling the ball away from Denton Geyer's Quint Gardner to end Geyer's comeback bid in the 5A Division II uh, state final. You know, for both Geyer and Trinity, the disappointment there in the state championship game, but it can't take away from the tremendous seasons both those schools had. Yeah, I mean, uh, Trinity is still thought of as a great program. I mean, nobody's going to be wanting to schedule them anytime soon. <laughs> you know, Pearland came out with a great game plan, showed they were a great team, too. How about this one? Tevin Williams, uh, this was on the opening touchdown run. He hurdled a defender and went 52 yards. That's a special one, J.D. That was a great play. Uh, we were in the booth, and everybody in the press box saying, okay, here we go. You know, Trinity's going to run away with it. <laughs> of course, we know what ultimately wound up happening, but it was just so great to see that. And we were all fixated on the giant Jerry board, uh, <laughs> just watching it replay in slow motion over and over. So, yeah, it was pretty exciting. And, of course, here in Vibe Magazine and on Vibe TV, you're able to relive some of those moments. And what a weekend it was for Jonathan Gray. He played in a Friday night game at Cowboys Stadium, had the record-setting eight touchdowns, set the uh, state record for touchdowns in a season with 59. Jonathan Gray from state champion, two-time state champion Alito. Yeah, I think the the single site is, is really going to have the effect that the state basketball tournament being single site and people kind of going year after year. People still talk about at the state basketball tournament the year Shaquille O'Neal came. Mm -hmm. You know, they talk at the state track meet when Roy Martin set, you know, ran a 19, mm -hmm. you know, 200. And I think Jonathan Gray's performance will get will be carried on at each you know, single side. You know, maybe Mesquite Poteet quarterback Bo Now's performance in the playoffs uh, should be uh, carried on as well, as this was a player who returned from an ankle injury to lead Mesquite Poteet's comeback that almost knocked off defending an eventual state champion, Alito, a game played at Cowboys Stadium as well. Yeah, good hops, good hops for Bo in that picture. I'm proud of him for that. That's pretty good for him. And how about at the, on the private school rankings? The TAP State uh, Championships were down uh, south. Some of the games played in uh, Belton. Prestonwood Christian players and coaches celebrating their upset of two-time defending TAP's Division I state champion Fort Worth Nolan in the state title game. And also Parish Episcopal, the players and coaches raising the trophy of their first TAP State Football Championship after beating Fort Worth Christian for the Division II title. Yeah, and Dallas-Fort Worth is really a, a strong point with private school football. And uh, in fact, Prestonwood Christian beat Parrish in the semifinals of to win the 4A title last year, then came back and won the 5A, and then Parrish won the 4A this year. Lots of talented players on those teams going to big-time schools. You know, uh, Parrish had a kid that's at Oklahoma now, a signee to uh, Arizona th th coming up, and uh, Prestonwood's got tons of talent coming through there. Well, uh, J.D., I want to ask you about uh, the magazine. And, of course, though you've got just a glimpse of some of the things that's in Vite Magazine. It's a month, on a monthly basis. It's, it comes out. Right. The December issue has a basketball preview as yes, well. Yes, it's our basketball preview. It annually comes out. And we're talking about the top teams and what our predictions are and who we think the stars are going to be. And it's uh, and, Jade, and Smart from, uh, from <laughs> Marcus Smart from oh, yeah. uh, Flower Mound. Marcus, one of the top players in the state. 
Yeah, these, I mean, he's just awesome. And David and I were just talking about that before. He's wanting me to slap him a magazine because uh, <laughs> he wants to get some extra copies. But we cover that. But we also are covering uh, the volleyball championships. You know, we're covering that in the D December issue. But you mentioned about the photography, and the photography is so uh, so important in our magazine. I mean, it really sets us apart, I think. Uh, when you were going over some of the, uh, uh, the photography there, I mean, it was just crazy when you see Brandon Carter down there on the ground like that. That's, that's a Sports Illustrator type shot. And of course, you can see these on our Facebook page also, at Vibe DFW Facebook. So All right, we're there. JD, we appreciate it. Now, David will return later here on Vibe TV. There is much more to come. Coming up next, we'll tell you about one local athlete and why he has been nominated for a national award. And later, why is the upcoming camp season so important for underclassmen? Our recruiting expert, Mr. McNabb here, will be back to tell us. Welcome back to Vibe TV. We wanted to take a moment today to congratulate a North Texas high school football player. Michael Harris of Fort Worth has been named a top 12 uh, finalist for the High School Football Rudy Award. This is a national honor. Nominees are selected as the nation's most inspirational football players that demonstrate the values of Notre Dame football legend Daniel Rudy Rudiger. You'll probably remember his story from the classic football movie Rudy. Harris is one of two finalists from Texas. He is diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, but maintains good grades and is a starter on the defensive line for Trimble Tech's varsity team. If Michael wins, he'd receive a $10,000 academic scholarship. Second and third place nominees receive a $5,000 scholarship, but the fan favorite who gets the most online votes receives $5,000 too. You can help Michael win that scholarship. Just go to highschool-rudy-awards.com and vote for him. Now here's a story of a different kind of inspiration. 17-year-old DeAndre Preston is out of the hospital after a spinal cord injury paralyzed him from the neck down. DeAndre was a star football player for Molina High School. And TXA 21 Stephanie Lucero looks at how Preston and his family are adjusting to a new life. DeAndre Preston was such a dynamic football athlete, he played offense and defense for Molina High. He was starting quarterback, starting free safety, and the school's homecoming king when he was injured. And all I remember just falling to the ground. His mother, Maya Preston, hasn't left her son's side since. Just trying to keep him positive. That's all I'm doing. I don't want him bitter. I don't want him depressed. I don't want him sad. You know, life has to go on. So. That's all I'm trying to do. This family is managing with help from family and friends and developing a new routine that's difficult because DeAndre now lives in a room where there's little privacy. You know, especially when it's time for changing and stuff like that, and he's not too crazy about that. And it's hard to forget that night nearly three months ago. It was a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit late in the fourth quarter in a game against Pinkston and it left Preston paralyzed from the neck down. A senior, DeAndre, was being heavily recruited by a number of colleges. Yes, May Preston even no, called her son Mr. Spotlight. Spotlight, and Preston admits he misses the sport that he played since he was four years old. I look at the pitches and games and stuff. College football may not be in his future, but DeAndre Preston says his full story has yet to be told. My book of life, making people laugh and happy, and you're smiling like you're doing now. <laughs> DeAndre still hopes to attend college. His high school football coach and friends are with him frequently, and they have set up a tax-deductible fund for the family. If you'd like more information, go to our website, cbsdfw.com, and click on Stephanie's Story in News. We have a great story for you coming up next. A local marching band gets a gig of a lifetime. Find out where they played last week and what it took to get them there. Bite TV continues in two minutes.
hundreds of local high school students had the opportunity of a lifetime. They played on one of the nation's biggest stages on New Year's morning. The All Birdville Marching Band performed during the Rose Bowl Parade in Pasadena, California. And before they made the trip, TXA 21 photojournalist Edgar Solis watched as 500 band members went through their paces. We have 540 kids marching. It's a huge drum line. It's very, very loud. We have right at about 200 brass, about 200 woodwind players, about 75 percussion, we have about 60 the color guard. There's never been like I thought, like, hey, you know, my senior year old in, you know, the Rose Bowl. It had never crossed my mind. For many of the Rose kids, this will be their first time possibly even have a state, the first time to fly. Oh my gosh, we're going to the Rose Bowl. What this means is being able to contribute our gift of music to the world. First time I stood up there and heard what sound we could produce, I was, I was amazed. At the top things that have happened in this process is bringing these three schools together and in the process really bringing all of the cities that are together. What I find is different when all three schools play together, it's just, it's loud. This is our first Rose Parade. To me, like it's gonna be like a pony. Just like all of us with our instruments just marching forward. It's gonna be intimidating. I'm ready to show the world though where Birdville ISD is. For me and for several other members of the All Birdville Marching Band, it is our last marching band experience. The students had to raise their own money to make the trip to California. They are one of only 22 bands to get an invitation to perform in Pasadena. Well over 100,000 people lined the parade route and over 10 million people watched on television. And because Birdville was the only Texas high school band, there were loud cheers from TCU fans along the parade route. As you can imagine, the students loved the experience, which also included trips to Disneyland and Universal Studios. Don't go anywhere. Anywhere. Coming up next on Vibe TV, we continue our recruiting discussion with resident expert David McNabb. Find out more about the latest recruits and the upcoming camp season. It's time for our recruiting update for this week. And with that, we welcome in once again, David McNabb, VIPE recruiting expert, author of the weekly McNabb Report. And David, let's uh, talk about uh, some guys that were flying under the radar, now definitely very much on the radar. Dreyfus Jackson, the quarterback from Cedar Hill, plus his top receiver, Lavette Gibson, have both committed to Rice University. Yeah, very big commitments uh, in, in two factors. Big commitments for, for Rice to get players of their caliber that are that have been looked at across the country. It's also really good for Cedar Hill for people to see, you know, that they've got kids that are going to Rice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like having somebody going to Northwestern, going to Stanford. It really helps uh, Cedar Hill's program as well. Yeah, we see Dreyfus Jackson here, and he's had a, what a terrific high school career he had. In fact, he was starting some games as a sophomore uh, at that school, and then Lavette Gibson's a guy who came on strong in his senior year. Yeah, and they're they're both high potential guys. I mean. And they have so many athletes at, at, at Cedar Hill and they, they spread it around that they still have a lot of maturing both in their body and in their skills and what they do. So, so yeah, they're, they're, they're terrific athletes and, and will do really well, right? You know, what, one school that uh, a lot of college recruiters were looking at uh, this year in Hearst, Texas, L.D. Bell High School, had some Division I prospects, including the quarterback who made a decision this week. Yeah, James Morrow is a big 6'7 uh, quarterback. I don't think he's quit growing. Every time you go out, every two weeks, he'd be two inches taller. <laughs> so, uh, but he's a big pro-style guy that's going to go to Western Kentucky. They, they've just got a new offensive coordinator that came from Yale that had, had really good success with Patrick Witt, who was a big 6'5 kid from uh, Wiley. Mm -hmm. And so he, he's got that big pro style, pro style build. So Moro, you may be hearing about in a couple of years is 
one of those pro kind of guys that they're really looking at. Playing in the Sun Belt Conference, the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. All right, I know there are a lot of parents who would like some information on recruiting. Maybe you're the parent of a sophomore, a rising sophomore, or a junior football player. Well, give some advice on what they can do right now. I know there's some camps coming up. Uh, really, on the oldcoach.com, we'll have some camps, and that's really where our affiliation with rivals.com, which is the national site, because when you come to an old coach camp, your 40 times, your vertical leap, your height and weight all get in the database, which is accessible across the country. But what I would tell parents and athletes, prepare for those camps. You know, they have fully automatic times. Uh, be you know, in shape, be, be in ready shape. To go. I always tell them, don't <laughs> show up. If you came here and just had a breakfast of Red Bull and white powder <laughs> donuts, it may not be a good day for you to have <laughs> to be at a camp because it's, it's you important. know it's it's hard if you run a four eight and you go well I run a four six well but you got time to four eight and so be ready for those camps and then start looking at some colleges that you might be interested in going and looking at their half day camps during the summer uh, you know whether it's Oklahoma State or Texas or whatever kind of start planning those out because each of those schools only have a couple of camps mm -hmm. during the summer and it's the oldcoach.com for more information on those. Camps camps coming up and in the coming weeks we'll give you more information on uh, what you can do as a parent or as a recruit to get your name uh, flying on the radar instead of under the radar. David yeah. McNabb, we appreciate it very much and we appreciate you joining us as well this week once again for Vipe TV. We'll be back next week at 1030 as well to bring you the best stories in North Texas high school sports and before we go we want to show you more of the performance from this year's Rose Bowl Parade in the All Birdville March. Band. Have a great day.